What up dudes? It's Gaz and welcome back to the Warframe video. Today we're going over Red Death Ash. The Ash build based around red critting and one-shotting the steel path. Before we get into it, make sure you're subbed to the channel and all that. And we'll also be going over some changes that might be coming to this build in the future because there is a big focus rework coming out at the end of the month for the Angels of Zeremon update. And it will definitely, you know, it will probably just give us more damage, to be honest. But the focus tree I'm using is changing slightly, so we'll go over that as well. And I'd also like to apologize to people that watch the live streams. I have been having major, major internet issues lately, guys, and I can I have not been able to stream. Well, actually, I guess I was technically able to stream, but the stream would completely drop every, like, 40 minutes. So I've been trying to get that fixed. I'm still trying to figure it out, so give me a little bit more time, and I'm really sorry about that. Trust me, it frustrates me, too. All right, so this build is Red Death Ash. Why did I make this? Well, because Smoke Shadow, the Ash Augment, was actually buffed uh, relatively recently, where now, instead of just making your allies invis like it did before, it will also give uh, your allies and yourself 150% increased crit chance for weapons. Now, uh, the, the, the problem, like, people might be like, this doesn't work on Ash himself, because it doesn't even say in the description of this, this mod, it works on Ash. And it even doesn't even show a UI element. As you see, I go invis, no UI element saying it's working. It is working, guys. I have tested it. And that's why we're using this for specifically getting guaranteed red crits on certain weapons. If you have a high base crit chance weapon with this mod, and maybe even have a crit chance Riven, you can push it to guaranteed red crits. So the entire purpose of this build is full armor removal, we've got roar for increased damage, and we've got guaranteed red crits. So that was not that even much buffing, like we viral proc her, she's so done for after that, and that's not even with fully stacked damage. So um, that's the idea of this. We're utilizing certain uh, weapons with a very, very high base crit chance, like the Kuva Shakur. It's got 50% at base. So if you use something like the Tendon Envoy, maybe even get guaranteed reds there potentially. But Kuva Shakur with our ribbon is 225% crit chance. You throw on Smoke Shadow and you're at exactly 300% crit chance. So it is going to be a higher end player kind of thing. We're using extremely powerful weapons with basically specific ribbons to get to where we are. We've gone with the Pangolin Prime. To uh, now, as far as the melee, there's lots of melees that with this mod can get guaranteed red crits. But I find the Pangolin Prime has extremely high base damage at 248. It's got really high status and really high crit. Uh, with you know, it's got low attack speed. That's the main problem. We're running actually Arcane Strike on our frame to get this thing to uh, attack normally. But there's other weapons like the Car the Karst Prime or Karis Prime. You could definitely rock this. It might be a little bit under guaranteed reds, but this is this has even more base, 100 more base damage than what we're rocking, so this could be disgusting. Um, and even, like, I have... It depends what weapons you have ribbons for, because this is a, a build that revolves around crit chance ribbons, to be honest. So, um, let's just go over what we're rocking here, every mod in, in detail. So, enemy radar, just for seeing where enemies are through the walls, it's very helpful in disruption for me, as someone that blasts music while I'm playing this game, not the in-game music. I need enemy radar to see where that demo list is through the wall, because I cannot hear it beeping. So, very, very helpful and important there. Um, also, it's helpful for kills per second in survival, just to know where all these, these enemies are. Prime sure footed. Now, this one, even though I'm not running an AoE, like rocket launcher or whatever, this is good because the Kuva Shakur does do slightly AoE damage, and this uh, prevents us getting knocked over. Also, there's lots of enemies that knock you over in this game anyway, so this is a staple mod if you have it. Seeking Shuriken, this is let, lets our first ability, Shuriken, fully remove enemy armor and make them just a, a noodle, pretty much. And you blast the noodle with your Kuva Shakur, and they're done. Uh, so, yeah, you only need a little bit of strength to get full armor removal because it's 70% at base. So, I think with just Unroll Intensify, you'll be at full armor strip, as you can see right there. Rolling Guard, even though we're perma invis, we probably should run this anyway, just in case. Um, if you if you are a <laughs> a very, uh, you know, you, you don't want to, you just want to live on the edge, you could probably take this off for some more power strength or something as we're running Roar, and more power strength makes more, Roar do more damage. Um, and this, remember, this does double apply to slash procs too. Um, and Eclipse is just too annoying to use, so I usually go for Roar on uh, DPS boost on Ash. You could also run like Ensnare to stun the Demolist if you're doing Disruption. There's lots of things you could run here, so that's what I'm going with. It's just pretty straightforward and easy. Works on your four as well, technically. Um, Narrow-minded, like I said earlier, uh, his his Invis has like eight second duration, so you want to jam nearly as much duration as you possibly can. But here's one of the problems with narrow-minded. You're, you're not going to be buffing your teammates with Smoke Shadow at all. This is like a selfish Ash build, because look at this. Uh, it's got a 15 meter radius at base for the um, the cloaking, but with Narrow Mind, it goes on a 5.1. Unless your ally is right on top of you, 
They are not going to get this buff, and it only lasts for 20 seconds, even with all this duration anyway. So don't bother with this build buffing your teammates. They should be they should have a self-sustaining build themselves anyway for doing, doing a high-end mission with them, in my opinion. But yeah, we want as much duration as we can. This is the highest duration mod in the game. You technically could go a little bit lower rank, narrow-minded, for a little bit more range. But, uh, eh. Like I said, you can be running this solo, so you want as much duration as possible. Natural talent for ca recasting your invis as fast as possible once you lose it, because you can't recast it while it's active, so you kind of just need to recast it. Um, let's actually get some gameplay on the screen here, too, while we're talking about this. Um, I find natural talent very important on Ash. not to mention Roar has a very long uh, cast animation. You want to shorten that. Uh, and, you know, that, that it just it's good to have increased cast speed in this game. Maybe with one of these new focus trees, I think Zenric is going to give increased cast speed. You could potentially not run this, but I'd like to run it. Prime Continuity, similar situation. You just want to have higher duration on your invisibility. I guess technically on your roar as well. Um, so you want to run that. And we only have one power strength mod with Umbral Intensified to get us our full armor strip from our Seeking Shuriken. And also to get an increase in roar buff for more power slash procs. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess there's other things technically, too. It gives our four more damage if we ever use our four. I don't really use the four that much. Um, yeah. And let's see what else we got. We got Prime Flow for increased energy. Uh, sometimes when there's energy drain, it, it can be annoying to not have a big, big energy pool. So we want Prime Flow. You can technically take that off if you don't. If you think you got enough energy, we have uh, 350 with our R7 Prime Flow. You could, I think you get like 420 or something like that with a max one. And then the entire crux of the build, Smoke Shadow. Not necessary, but fun uh, to get red crits. Just gives you increased crit chance uh, for weapons while you're in Viz. Our, our, our Arcanes of Choice are Arcane Energize and Arcane Strike. Arcane Strike is because our melee weapon is actually more important than it might seem here. Uh, we are running primary dexterity and secondary dexterity to give us increased combo duration. But that's also going to mean that we're going to need to get melee kills to get the damage buff on our, our really powerful primary Kuba Shakur. Now the reason I went with primary dexterity is because I have found, I've, I've run the Kuba Shakur in high-end uh, missions a lot. It has really bad reload speed and it's a single target, like it's usually like a single target weapon to be honest. You're not going to be killing uh, a ton of a trash ads with the Kuba Shakur. You can use your melee to reliably kill them and with this build it's like guaranteed red crit slash procs. Uh, which are crazy. Don't forget that Ash's passive also makes Slash procs more deadly as well. Um, so you, you actually need to ha have a really good melee for this loadout. And it's not like it's a bad thing that, you know, Ash is very, very good with Slash proc melees like this. So it, it makes sense. So Arcane Strike, as our damage comes from our melee, to an extent, we are going to rock that. Um, and then let's just move on to the weapons here. We'll talk about what we, what we have. Now, for the Kuba Shakur, like I said, you do want a crit chance driven to make this work, guys. You cannot get guaranteed red crits without either Avenger, Adarza, Harrow, other outside crit buffs, or have a crit chance driven for a high crit weapon. So, um, we've got Critical Delay and Kuba Shakur Satakran, giving us 150% crit chance, and the Kuba, uh, Critical Delay is 200% more. We've got Galvanized Aptitude. We are using a Condition Overload uh, Primer for our secondary, which I don't even usually use, but if you do remember to do it, this is crazy high damage. Um, the Kuba Shakur has built-in guaranteed impact procs, so this mod, Internal Bleeding, is actually better than Hunter Munitions on this specific weapon and a couple other weapons. So, um, the proc chance on Hunter Munitions is 30% on a crit, and Internal Bleeding is at 35%. Uh, on an impact proc, but it's actually it becomes 70% when it has the weapon has very low fire rate. As you see, we have very low fire rate here. It's a 70% chance for a giganto uh, slash proc with internal bleeding on this weapon. So very very good. Not to mention we have more multi shot in our ribbon, so we are we are getting lots and lots of slash procs, lots of big red damage numbers. Uh, galvanized chamber really good for getting more multi shot, increased crit damage. We have so much crit chance, you might you better throw some crit damage in here somewhere. And then we got Prime Cryo Rounds with our Toxin. Kuba Shakur makes it viral. Uh, just big, big elemental damage. And then Prime Band of the Grenier because we're fighting the Grenier's. And they want to take more damage. Or we want to deal more damage to them, rather. And then here's the dexterity I was telling you about. Uh, so on melee kill, 60% increased damage for 20 seconds. Stacks up to six times. It's quite easy to get kills with our ridiculous melee weapon. So the easiest choice here. Don't run Primary uh, Merciless on the Kuba Shakur for high-level missions. You will never have any. You'll probably have like one to two buffs because these stacks run out every four seconds. More for AoE weapons. And then primary deadhead potentially could give you really, really big damage if you can like reliably like, you know, kill three enemies and then, you know, 
reload your gun in time. Uh, but we'll go over the companion and why we're having not as bad of reload issues. If you don't have a ribbon for this, the build's not really possible. Like I said, you're going to need to run like Avenger if you don't have a ribbon for this. Um, but that's the purpose of the video, is red crit ribbons. we got the epitaph here. This is going to be our condition overload primer. Now, you could run the new core as well, but the thing about the epitaph is if you're running uh, disruption, the epitaph has built-in cold procs, which cold procs do work on the demolist to make them move slower, so that's pretty good. Um, and we've modded for viral and heat with auger seeker for longer cold proc and viral proc duration. The ribbon, this, now this is definitely can be replaced with a lot of stuff. Any, this search the word status and whatever comes up, you can replace this ribbon with that because a ribbon is just more multi-shot. It, it's not even worth slotting in here to be honest. So, um, just put, just put whatever there. Uh, but the entire purpose of this is just getting more procs in the enemy. You want fire rate and all that to make it so they take even more damage from your melee and from your gun. Um, reflex draw to just switch weapons faster, fire rate to knock, shoot out more viral procs, and then the rest is multi-shot and status chance, to be honest. Moving on to our melee, this is the Pangolin Prime, like I said. One of the highest base damage weapons in the game. Definitely the highest base damage sword in the game. What we've got here is we've got Blood Rush Weeping Wounds, so the higher our combo multiplier is, the higher stats we have. We've also got Gladder Might and Gladder Vice, giving us even higher crit chance for every crit multiplier. We, if you use two gladder mods like this, it's like Blood Rush never even got nerfed. So, um, you know, these mods aren't the best, but, you know, it, it could be worse. We technically could run uh, Organ Shatter here for a little bit more crit damage, but we do not get our guaranteed reds, or nearly guaranteed reds with that, although we do get 30% more crit damage. Um, so yeah, you could definitely change this if you're not using the exact same setup I am, which you probably aren't because this relies on a Riven. Um, you could definitely switch things up. Like I said, there's lots of melee choices. And then condition overload, the entire crux of all this crazy damage. You know, you, you get them with 20 different procs, and you slash them once, they're so dead. They're so, so dead. Um, moving on to the focus tree. Now, this is what stuff might, this is where stuff might change. We're technically just running Naramon right now for power spike, which is going to make it where we don't lose our combo duration as fast. But once the focus rework goes through, we're going to be getting a big, big buff here for pretty much no reason at all. Um, so as far as new things on the focus tree for this build, I'm mostly looking at Void Levitation and Lethal Levitation, which is going to be a new ability for the operator where you push a button and it fires out a wave that will uh, lift enemies in the air. And then what Lethal Levitation does after that is you shoot those enemies with your operator. And for every enemy you shoot with your operator that is lifted, you will get 50% increased damage. And it seems like that's for your frame as well. So what, the way I'm envisioning this, I see like a... A hallway, let's say, let's just say it has like five enemies in it. Not even that many, you know, like you could definitely see more, but let's say there's five enemies in that hallway. I fire off this uh, this shockwave that will stun the enemies, and I shoot them with my operator flamethrower amp, which is very easy to hit multiple enemies with. Now I have like 250% increased damage for 60 seconds, and it seems like that's quite easy to do. All you need to do is not get one shot as operator while you're firing out that wave, and there you go. You, you get your lift enemies, you get your increased damage, and that's for 60 seconds. You do that once every minute. Sounds a little bit annoying, but you don't even need the damage in the first place. So, sure. Um, and then the rest of it is just, you know, we're still running this for the combo duration. Alternatively, if you didn't want to run, if you didn't want to rely on your melee, which is not this build, by the way, you could try out Matarai, which is going to have the Void Strike. When you press one button, you if you have full Operator Energy, you're going to do 1,000% increased damage for 8 seconds with a 40 second cooldown. So that's a little bit annoying that the long cooldown, but if for some reason you're not doing enough damage, just press one button, that guy is so dead. <laughs> that guy is beyond dead. You, you take all this, you jam a thousand percent more damage on it, but yeah, that will one shot level 10,000, and this build can already one shot level 10,000. Uh, so yeah, really nasty, but there's all the, also other good stuff on this uh, Matarai. So yeah, that might be another choice. I'm gonna probably go with Naramon in the end. And here's our Panzer Cat, which is actually very helpful because I said the Kuba Shakur has terrible reload speed. So we've actually got Synth Deconstruct and the other Synth one, Synth Fiber. So this will make it so 10% of our magazine is reloaded per second while holstered. And while holstered means while you're meleeing as well. So we kill enemies in our melee, we're, re we're reloading a really slow gun just by swinging, and then we can switch back, blast a Demolist or Acolyte instantly, and then you just switch back to just killing trash heads with our melee. That's the entire purpose of the build, guys. You kill trash heads with the melee, high priority targets, you use the Kuba Shakur on them, and then just rinse and repeat. Um, once everything's buffed up, you, you deal like multi-million damage. And the fun thing is this can work on lots of different weapons too. So yeah, let's just build up, uh, get some, some uh, kills from our Pangolin Prime. And then once we go into red crit mode with our cloaking sh or, uh, smoke shadow, everything is red now. And it's really, really big slash proc. So we'll, we'll roll. Let's just, let's just buff here. Get a, a couple kills with the Shakur so we get our galvanized stacks. 
and she was covering her face. Let's remove their armor now. Five million. I mean, that's that's like a low number for this build, to be honest. Five million is low. Um, and then these guys, we see, we're not in Viz. We got an orange crit there. Once we go back in Viz, everything will be red. That's the idea. Seeing red, the red death. I like the red death more because it gives me nostalgia for a different game. So I uh, hope you guys found this video fun and helpful. Like I said, I, I'll probably do, once the update comes out, I will do this build again once the update comes out with either Naramon or Matarai, and we'll do level 10,000 in that video too. I just have been having a hard time organizing stuff because of my internet problems. So I'll try to get a level 10,000 mission going after the update, okay? Hope you guys found this helpful. I'll see you next time. Thanks for all the support, and uh, yeah, take it easy. Peace.